The 6.5 is on the road with a view from Davos. We're here at the World Economic Forum. Uh, WEF is an interesting melding of tech, uh, politics, uh, policy. We're having a ton of conversations uh, about AI. I mean, not unsurprisingly. Yeah, Pat, we knew that coming into this, the big topic was going to be AI. A lot of the sort of historic uh, trend lines, you know, every year there's a theme here. In the last couple of years, it's been all about this kind of build out of infrastructure. This year, I feel like it's kind of like the AI ROI. People are really trying to say, how are we going to take AI and make it meaningfully drive economic growth? And so coming together with the best price performance area in the market here in Davos, more meetings, more conversations, and of course, so many here on the 6.5. Yeah, and pulling AI together is no trivial matter. I mean, it takes a combination of compute, networking, data, security, and about 17 other things. And a big player in pulling this all together uh, is Cisco. And it's our pleasure to have G2 here first time on the 6.5. Oh, how are you? Second you doing, time, buddy? actually. Oh, second time, yeah. okay. No, not a doubt. We sat, yeah. we sat yeah. with G2 at the Partner yeah. Summit, right? That's right, that's right. Yeah. Great to see you. Good to see you, man. Yeah. I'm actually following your workouts quite diligently <laughs> on LinkedIn, so I'm inspired you by know, what uh, you're doing. When you had fallen as far as I, there's <laughs> only, there was only one way. So, I uh, think you're doing so pretty you. well. In no, fact, I, our, our, uh, um, some of our executives are like, have you seen Patrick? He is fit. I'm like, I know, I, I, I feel terrible now. No, I appreciate that. <laughs> but hey, let's talk about more interesting things than yes. my health journey. Uh, and, and maybe a great place to start off is, is what have you gotten out of the World Economic Forum? Um, you know, we're, half, we're about halfway at the halfway mark. Are you getting out of it what you expected? I think uh, my expectations whenever I come here are super high and every year I feel like I exceed them because this is the one of the few times in a year where you can meet customers from all continents and partners from all continents in a very very short time period and the just the density of talent and brain power is so high that um, we've had a great three days yeah. and um, I've got a you know really set of, exciting set of meetings today as well excellent yeah. we're starting off here <laughs> I mean, I'm sure it's not starting. This is the most exciting. The most exciting, exciting of any of the meetings that I've had. Eighth <laughs> conversation you've probably had, G2. You know, you hear the kind of AI trend line, and you know, one of the things was it is a continuum, and you know, you've got kind of people because maybe if you're in our space and you're around it, you're like we're in the middle and late stages, but really it's very early, and you get that when you talk to people who aren't entrenched in tech every single day. Every company, including Cisco, has sort of been on their own timeline and horizon. I feel like Cisco kind of was a little bit cautious coming in about how much you talked about AI, how much you positioned yourselves around it, while other companies maybe ran out really fast. And now it feels like you're turning up the heat a little bit. Talk a little bit about how you're thinking about that through your lens, G2, about sort of Cisco coming out bigly at a big event last week and really starting to really tell the story of how AI is going to change its future. Yeah, you know, one of the reasons we, uh, we took it slow early is we wanted to just be deliberate about what were meaningful areas where Cisco could add value that was unique to Cisco. You know, and if you think about what's happening in the industry right now, um, we, I don't know, there's about $225 billion spent on training. Yeah. About $10 billion has been derived on the inferencing side in revenue. So like there's still a gap, and why is that gap? Because I think there's only two, two types of companies in the world. Ones that are going to be AI forward, what I, what I like to call as people that know how to take advantage of AI really well, they have high dexterity with AI, and others that are going to struggle for relevance. And, and so the first, the, the great ones, I think they, they want to move fast, but they're being held back because of safety and security in AI. So that's an area that we have really doubled down on at Cisco. And we, we made an announcement last week on a product called AI Defense that really helps take out the unpredictability from AI and you know, validate models, provide visibility, make sure that you've enforced guardrails. And um, I'm looking forward to all the things that we can do to accelerate the adoption of AI because frankly, I think the future is going to be agentic. There's going to be a lot of kind of workflows that get automated. And you know, uh, I'm in three to five years, it'll be very hard for us to look back because our lives will be very different because of all the advancements that we're going to see. Yeah, so G2, it's becoming a lot clearer what your play is in the enterprise. 
uh, as it regards to, to AI. And AI defense is just one more comprehensive, easy button offering uh, that, that you're providing. But, but one of the untold stories is that you, you are very much uh, a player uh, within hyperscalers. We, are. Uh, we talked to Chuck about that uh, yesterday. And you know, Dan and I uh, you know, sit in on your earnings calls. Uh, to go through and they're discussed. Can you can you t talk to us a little bit more about what your play is there? Yeah. So I mean, if you think about the, what we are doing right now um, on the hyperscaler side is specifically for training. There's five core components needed for AI that are very essential. Right. So there's compute, the algorithms and data, compute algorithms, data, and the networking and security. Those are the five. And the way that we think about it is high performance, low latency, high energy efficient, um, you know, kind of networking is super important for AI. And if you don't have that, you don't really have AI, you know, and GPUs are very energy hungry. Every kilowatt of energy that you can save on the network can be given to the GPU so that they can process more. So I think there's, there's a lot of appetite in the market for saying, give us that low latency, high performance intra GPU communication fabric. Right. Because if you think about the amount of packets that have to move through the GPUs in a cluster, uh, it's a pretty high amount, and every millisecond counts you know, on those workloads. Now, by the way, that's on the training side. On the inferencing side, I think the market's going to be even larger. And you know, some, we, were, we were talking to Jonathan Ross from, from Grok. Um, and we're we're I, both investors. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and um, he was, uh, he was uh, as I, I think inferencing is probably going to be like 20x of training, and training's growing at a pretty fast pace. And then with, uh, you know, kind of uh, test time compute, with the Gentic kind of workflows, you're going to start to see a more, more and more demand for this kind of stuff, where networking and security are going to be at the core underlying fabric. And then we also do a lot on the compute side by providing enterprises with a complete box that you can go out and deploy in a turnkey way. It's, it's really interesting, um, you know, you started going down that path. I, I was sort of a choose your own adventure. I had these few different paths I was going to take you down now. But <laughs> when you mentioned uh, that conversation with Jonathan, you know, we were having a kind of inter interesting conversation, but there's really this kind of almost Apple versus Android thing going on with AI right now. You know, there, of course, NVIDIA has been a, just a tremendous success. And you have I've, to give it to Jensen. He's absolutely. done such an amazing job. Absolutely. Yeah. But the proprietary networking that exists inside and outside of the rack is creating this kind of really big, you know, debate over time. And, it, you know, Cisco obviously going to Ethernet and the open standard. And when we talked to Jonathan, talking about kind of how they've developed protocol and then they're using like 25 gig networking uh, in, in switching and they're creating this amazing throughput and inference. I mean, how does that kind of play out in your mind, the sort of proprietary open? Uh, what do you see in the future there? Well, we think in the long term, you know, Ethernet will be the standard that people will use for communication. And so I, we, we're betting on it. We've actually um, been, been quite consistent in that point of view for the past few years. And I think it's going to be good for the industry. But I, I have to give a lot of uh, credit to, you know, every player in this market. And I think NVIDIA has done a fantastic job of not only providing the infrastructure, but leading the way and also sharing what kind of applications are going to be very useful in the market. So, uh, you know, we, we're partners with NVIDIA. We work very closely with them and we want to continue to make sure that that partnership only enhances over time. So the W in uh, WEF is world. world. We're at a multinational event here. And there's a lot of discussion, particularly with all of the different countries and governments here as a need for a hybrid AI sovereign cloud. Mm -hmm. And I'm curious how Cisco is supporting the, this notion of a, a sovereign AI cloud and the hybrid bonus points, uh, meaning going from on-prem uh, to the public cloud. So, look, I think there's going to be some level of interest that people are going to have in one repatriation of data centers back to the private cloud with AI, and that's going to happen, and that's where we have our enterprise offerings like AI pods that we announced at Partner Summit uh, in November uh, that are going to, that are really, you know, kind of picking up in demand. Uh, I was just with the government, uh, you know, minister of a country, um, of a state in the country, and uh, 
they were talking about exactly the same thing, which is they, they want to make sure that um, cybersecurity is handled. They want to make sure that, you know, data sovereignty is actually, um, you know, something that they um, keep in mind. And they want to they want to be the leader in AI. Right. And that's actually very common in any of the government kind of meetings that I'm, I, I have been to in the past couple of days. It's a very common theme. And I think that's great for Cisco because we've got all the infrastructure for making data sovereignty a reality making sure that you've got the right level of security architecture in place and doing that with with the level of scale that I think a lot of companies struggle with sometimes. Yeah, makes yeah. sense. So G2, as we sort of wind down, I, I want to ask you a little bit more of a the, the human side of implementation. You know, in the end you guys build great products, but you know, our data, we did a survey, we talked to 213 CEOs of companies with more than a billion dollars in revenue. And we were trying to understand um, their AI success stories. We partnered with Carney, the, the big management consulting firm on this. And when we, we basically, the answers and the outcomes of it was that digital companies are really struggling to actually get the people to buy in to this AI transformation. Same as every other, whether it's been big data, solo mobile, you know, whether it's been cloud or whether it was uh, the digital transformation. Kind of interesting is you're having these conversations with governments, you're having conversations with large enterprises and smaller businesses, because of course Cisco serves them all. How are you sort of talking about or hearing about the part of like getting the buy-in? Because the tech works. I mean, it's evolving, but the tech works. The buy-in seems to always be the hard part. Yeah, I think the way that we've actually seen this evolve is there's getting to be more and more of a recognition that the composition of the workforce of the workforce is fundamentally going to change. And what I mean by that is today, 100% of the workforce is humans. Yeah. I think tomorrow you're going to have AI agents, you're going to have robotics, you're going to have humanoids that are going to actually augment the workforce. And as that happens, your architecture will fundamentally need to change yeah. across everything, across connectivity, across security, across the way in which your workflows operate. And getting very specific about the workflows that you want to automate rather than just keeping it at a theoretical level I think is very important. So for example, um, you know, there's a huge amount of appetite without that much um, you know, skepticism around 90, 90 to 95% of first line calls that organizations take um, from their contact centers are going to be through a virtual agent first that'll actually fully get sure. resolved yeah. and only 5% get escalated. And that'll right. probably happen within a year or two. Interesting. So those are the number. kind of use cases, software development, software engineering, you will be able to buy in 2025 software engineers to augment your existing developer workforce. That'll be able to do full jobs. Like you can say, go build me an e-commerce application. It'll go and come back to you within a few hours and give you an application with test time compute where it's iterating yeah. behind the scenes. And those are the kind of things I think that we're getting to convergence where people are saying these are just going to happen. So from months to minutes, it sounds like, in terms of the efficiencies and growth we can get you to. Thank you so much for joining us thank here on the 6.5. Good to see you. Have a wonderful rest of your Davos, and we'll do this again soon. And thank you, everybody, for being part of the 6.5. We're on the road with a view from Davos. So much going on here. Hit subscribe, join us for all of our coverage here at the World Economic Forum. For this episode though, we gotta say goodbye. We'll see you later.